every ounce of energy that you spend helping people is fucking worth it. Hello, everybody. Diz Don here, and well, today's going to be a bit of a more somber vlog. Now, I wanted to do this on Thursday when I found out, but because of the way that things were, I didn't know if there would be more information to be given or if it would actually change what I was about to say. So, I waited, and it's going to be about a week late. But I've got a lot to say, guys. Um, last Thursday, I was at work. I went to break, my last break of the day, and found out that Chester Bennington, the lead singer of Linkin Park, had died by suicide. And I say it that way because that's the way that um, I learned how to properly say it through uh, psychological terms through the podcast Jedi Council. Um, and it, it's very weird because on Thursday I was listening to my MP3 player instead of just binging old episodes of Friday Night Fan Fiction. And I had it on random and I kept skipping through songs and skipping through songs because I didn't particularly like what kept coming up because I kept getting the same like three or four OC remixes and then I kept hearing Ecstasy of Gold. So I kept skipping and skipping and then I hit uh, the One Step Closer. And then a couple songs later, I hit In the End. And then I hit the Mega Ran uh, White Materia remix of Points of Sephiroth. And I'm just like, hmm, why is it playing so much Linkin Park? Usually it wouldn't like play so much Linkin Park. But, I mean, I was skipping through a lot of things. And I hadn't gone that far down random street on that MP3 player in a while, so... I completely forgot the order that it, that it usually tries to go in. Because random isn't random. It's more like a bounce around. And then after I hear Points of Sephiroth, I go to break and pull up my phone, look at the news, and I'm just like... Well, I don't even look, I didn't even look at the news first. I looked at... Uh, my Discord chats, one of my Discord chats, I heard someone say, dude, did you hear what happened to Chester Bennington in Lincoln Park? And, like, there was no details given, just that statement. So I'm like, what happened? Did, like, he get into a car accident? Did his kid die? Because, I mean, earlier this year we had uh, um, Zack Snyder, the director of uh, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman Down to Justice, and a couple other movies uh, in DC and whatever, his his kid killed, uh, ha, com, uh, died by suicide earlier, and, and in the year, and that like caused him to pull from Justice League. And I'm just like I'm I'm running things through my head as to what could possibly go on, while scrambling to try and get to Google and like look at the news and then I saw and it's like Ooh. and then I read the article and I saw I can't remember if it was the Yahoo News article or the 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 one that was a repeat of like the ABC News that was redone on my local news channels um site but it mentioned the that uh Chris and uh, Chester were really good friends. Chris being Chris Cornell, who also died by suicide earlier this year. And I, I wasn't quite myself for the rest of the day after that. Um, I had good reason not to be. 
I've been struggling with depression almost my entire life. And I read a couple more of the articles about what happened. And I mean, I remember a couple videos from the Soundgarden page and Lincoln Park page on Facebook being shared with me over the last, you know, couple of years showing up in my feed where Chester and uh, Chris would show up on stage together and sing songs together. And then I remember that when uh, Chris Cornell died, there was the, the very touching note that Chester wrote and it, it's one of those things where hindsight comes to play. I just, because both bands were pretty integral to my teen years when I was very much more in the goth uh, rocker thing. And I, I, as I was said earlier, I've suffered with depression most of my life. Um, I was born with cleft palate. I've had fucking over a dozen surgeries all on my fucking face. Um, I am extremely self-conscious because of the teasing I got because of my face and scars and stuff. Um, my parents didn't get along very well and never married. And I grew up pretty much without my dad. And there were other things that happened and reading like listening to Lincoln Park and knowing what happened with Chester and how he was uh, letting loose things that he had happened to him through music. And same with uh, Jonathan Davis of Korn. Uh, sexual abuse happened and they let that be put out in their music. And for me, someone who's experienced all of those things, who's been suicidal, who's made attempts on my own life, and to see in one the span of like three months, because Chris Cornell died in May, and now here it is, the middle end of July, and Chester's gone, and... I just don't, I made a post, I think both to my Twitter and Facebook that was probably the most levity that I could give to the situation through my dark, morbid sense of humor. And it was something like, oh, well, this is great. It looks like my uh, teen, ang the, the bands that I listened to during my teens that were all angsty and depressing, all their lead singers are starting to kill themselves. Now, I don't mean that in any disrespect to Chester or uh, Chris by any means at all. Um, but it was the only thing that I could think of that was like trying to put just a little bit of a weird, dark humor spin on what I was feeling without just word vomit of what's coming out in this vlog. Because I've said it in the past that I have, in, in, in my uh, teen and young adult years, I spent a lot of time doing uh, online role play type stuff uh, on message boards with uh, e-wrestling. I had a lot of characters that I portrayed and played as and wrote. And over the course of, what was it? 2000, yeah, 2002, 2003 to 2013-ish. I, over that time, I don't think I used a single Linkin Park song, but I'm not sure. Uh, some of the some of the archival files that I had on old hard drives, those hard drives died before I could get the files off of them. So I don't have like all my long list of uh, an intro theme tracks that for all of my characters like I used to. But I know I suggested and it was done a few times where Linkin Park was used as a theme for either shows dirt for the uh, E-Federation that we were 
that I was in at the time, one of them, or for a pay-per-view event. Well, the faux pay-per-view, I guess, would be the best way to put it. But Or like a stable I was part of with other people and their characters. And I think I may or may not have said this earlier this year when uh, Chris Cornell died, but Cornell, particularly his early 90s grunge, long hair, Jesus Christ pose version of himself was the what's called a pick base, as in the uh, the image that you use to, de- to best describe what your character looks like. And some people went into like uh, a 3D character generator program to make theirs. and But most people just picked active wrestlers or famous people. And I picked Chris Cornell for Fate because Fate was the most real interpretation of my struggle with depression and suicidal depression. And he's the one who I was writing when I went off my meds and went down that spiral of not sleeping, of hallucinating. And he's the one where I wrote my darkest, most fucked up, most Silent Hill-esque writing. I've still got because I ended the character before uh, before 20... Well, the majority of his character stuff I ended before 2010. And I have on a, a CD backed up files from that. And um, it's just rereading some of that recently when I was going through my old files to see what I still had. It's a glimpse into the madness of what was going on with me at the time. And I was listening to a lot of down on the upside by Soundgarden. I was listening to a lot of Seether. I was listening to a lot of Meteora and uh, hybrid theory from Lincoln park, because I think those were the only two albums that were out at the time that I owned. And I, I have this connection to the music and the artists because of that situation and other situations like it that happened where the music was the backing track to a major event in my life, albeit a dramatic one, but To see people who've struggled with problems I've had and I've not had to deal with uh, drug addiction, I've not fallen down into alcoholism, though it is, you know, a possibility down the road should enough things deteriorate with my mental health, but there's just so much to what they did and sang and put out there that's been catharsis for me, that's been helpful for me, and now it's gone forever. I... We can't get them back. They died without real reason um i mean they they had i'm not trying to blame i'm just trying to find the words here in my head rattling around but like i hope you understand what i'm saying but uh, they could have gone on to continue doing so much more um Chris Cornell wasn't 60 yet, and here we got Ozzy fucking on and off drugs since the 70s, and he's still kicking around. He might even do another solo goddamn album next year. And he's 
fucking old as shit. Rolling Stones, Keith Richards, um, you know, Roger Waters, and it, like all the older artists, a lot of them that are still around, they're still making music. Even the ones that have, you know, come out and said they've struggled with depression and stuff and drug addiction and it just makes me sad to see that and to know that they had wives and children and then it comes back because the way my brain works with how how much stuff has gone on in my life and where my mind always goes down the darkest path I start thinking, gee, I've thought my entire life that I don't have a lot of time on this earth. Well, one of my, I I guess you could call them idols, that I related to is now gone because of suicide. And they weren't much older than me. Chester was 10, 11 years older than me. And I think to like those questions that you kind of ask yourself, where do you want to see yourself in five years, 10 years? And right now, because of what's going on with my wife and myself and job hunts and stuff, it's kind of up in the air. I don't have a clear vision. And when I don't have a clear vision of where I want to be or where I will be in five, ten years. And then something like this happens. A switch clicks in my brain. That brings back through the PTSD symptoms I have. It brings back all these like flood of thoughts of times that I've also felt like I had no future or I didn't know what my future held when I was severely depressed and suicidal and it's hard to push those thoughts back it 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 really is and I have a great wife and because of her and her support and her love The lows that I've experienced since I've been with her haven't been as low, even though I've had some of the worst things in my life happen. I mean, I've I've went to fucking jail. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that story right now, but it happened. And it wasn't good. And my mental health played a part into why I was there and what happened. But... She saw me through that. We experienced because of that uh, and stigma that went with what happened that while we were dating and when her parents, you know, found out what was going on with that, they actively tried to, you know, do things without either of our input, without any of our um, agency allowed in the situation and tried to take her away from me or me away from her and we we've been through a lot together and i love her with everything that i am but these sorts of situations where people that i relate to or Like, if someone I actively knew, like one of my friends, were to, you know, die by suicide, I, I'd feel, a mixture of emotions, um, sorry, this has been kind of a downer of a vlog, I knew that it was going to be one, Uh, it's just, I... I've had more thoughts recently, especially like when I get a little irritated because the depression makes me irritable and 
because I haven't been sleeping very well thanks to the depression, waking up, having nightmares. And it's... It's odd because I was scrolling through Facebook, I think, yesterday. And I believe there was a short like video that George Takei reposted from somewhere else about the call to the void. Um, the feeling that you get where even if you're perfectly sane and you don't normally think about suicide where you're standing at the edge of a cliff and you're like, wow, what if I jumped? But because I have depression and suicidal depression, those thoughts aren't there and gone. They're there and then they kind of fade into like a weird whispery echo that reverberates off the back of my brain for hours, sometimes days. Even if I'm not actively thinking or being depressed enough to where I'm actively thinking of doing anything or hurting myself. Like right now, I'm not actively thinking that, oh, I should go fucking kill myself. But yet, the thought in the back of my head from like earlier today when we were working on one of my machines was like, oh, we had the machine up and the safety's off. What if I stuck my face into the embosser while it's running? What if I stuck my hand into the embosser? And, and those thoughts legitimately scare me when I have them because of my history and struggle with depression and I know that that's not what I want but yet the thoughts are there they're not thoughts I want but they're there and I just can't help but think that what happened in both situations with Chris Cornell and Chester is whether they were on a good day an average day a meh day or a bad day Whatever happened, those thoughts that because of the way depression and that sort of thought process works, they had a thought. It passed, but the echo slowly rose. It came back and they, it, it overtook them. They're their thoughts and their mental health issues won. And I say won because if you've ever, ever seen motivational things about depression or been to a therapist for depression, nine times out of ten, the therapist will tell you that you have to take it one day at a time. Sort of like Alcoholics Anonymous. One day at a time. Because if you're having a good day, sometimes those thoughts will creep in for no fucking reason and make it a bad day. Or you'll have an average day and it'll make it a bad day. And you have to always be fighting those thoughts. Because if you don't fight, if you don't win that day, you're not here tomorrow. You're dead. And I'm not saying that to be dramatic. I'm saying it because I know from experience. I've, I guess, been blessed <laughs> to um, have a lot of friends 
who also suffer from depression. And I've lost so much sleep being there for my friends when they needed me, when they were on the edge and about to jump, metaphorically speaking. Because I'm, for one, hoping that they would do the same for me if I was in their position. And for two, I love my friends. I want them around. I enjoy talking to them and hanging out with them, even if I can't get enough time with them because of distance or schedules or whatever. I don't want them to not exist anymore because I don't have enough faith in an afterlife to believe that they will be there if I were to die and enter any great beyond that there was. And I'm not upset at any of those hours of lost sleep. I'm glad for it. And if you've ever helped anyone who's been struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts, if you've ever even so much as just given someone a fucking hug who needed it because they were depressed and they needed something to reconnect them to reality and to let them know that they're appreciated and loved. Every ounce of energy that you spend helping people is fucking worth it. Because that person could be gone someday because because of inaction. And the potential that they have with what they their life is, they could do so much. When I was at my lowest point a little over almost like five and a half, almost six years ago, it'll be six years in November. Um, when I was at that point, And then again, a month later, I didn't have a lot of friends to talk to. I was isolated. I was in a bad situation. I felt like I was very alone. And I'm surprised I made it through that situation because that if any other time in my life up till now I would have actually succeeded in any attempts at suicide that is probably when that would have happened and if that had happened I wouldn't be talking to you right now I wouldn't be encouraging you to reach out and help people who are having problems and try to understand and be there and realize that it may seem, especially because of a lot of memes out there about the emo kids and cutting themselves and stuff. And I never really did much of that. I don't really like have scars from any like two or three times that I did, uh, cut on myself either in a suicide attempt or whatever but those jokes even even like half-hearted saying that has always seemed kind of irky to me even when I do it and I feel bad because you know there are the one or two people out of maybe 20, maybe 30, who are doing it for attention, as is, like, why people put the meme out there, the the stereotype out there, because of the way we handle suicide and death in our culture, because 
we've become so far removed from death and dying that it is a dev- it is a far more devastating thing now than it ever has been back a hundred years ago when people would suddenly kick it from the flu. Um, infant mortality was high, um, etc. And we're now so far removed from death. Uh, a lot of funerals are very, you know, I don't know how to put it. Like, I've been watching, started to watch Six Feet Under with my wife recently. We're two episodes in, and the one brother, I think his name's Nate, um, he's more of, a like, the way that grief used to be done was just full tilt, wailing, tearing your hair out, just screaming and crying. But now... That makes people uncomfortable. So even parents and spouses, that isn't public. Like that display isn't always public. There's the brave face that we put on at funerals. And we, especially like in my own family, I've been made fun of by uncles went at a funeral for another relative who died of cancer or Alzheimer's, I cried even a little. And it's like, oh, you big pussy, you fucking cry at a funeral. You're just supposed to suck it up and not just stuff your emotions down. Like, that isn't healthy. That's... And that, like societal norm of not dealing with those emotions exacerbates the problem. And that's why like 13 Reasons Why exists to try and it doesn't do a very good job I guess of like actually helping the situation, but it brings a little bit of light to mental health and these various situations and things. And it just, we need to remember that we're all human. We're not robots. We have to be willing to show emotion, to shed tears. It doesn't matter if you're man, woman, if you don't identify as either, if you're if you're born a man and identify as a woman, born woman, identify as a man, whatever you are or however you are, you should be allowed to grieve, to cry, to show emotion. And I'm rambling, but I guess my point is like, be there for people. Because you never know. Years ago when I was going through my depression, I didn't know that I'd be here. I didn't know that I'd be doing what I am. In five years, I could be still struggling with YouTube as just a hobby. Or I could be like the next Jacksepticeye. I don't know. But I want to take this moment, this incident that happened that's affected me and use it and my emotions and try and make something positive out of it. Because I love you guys. Every last person who watches my videos. Every person who leaves a like or a comment. I appreciate you. And I want you to know that you're not alone. If you're having depression issues. If you fucking feel like you're suicidal. I might not always have the time to talk with you at length, but know that I appreciate you and there is hope. I've come so far from where I was not even six years ago. I have friends. I have a wife. 
I have hope at a future, at having a family, at being successful at something, at some sort of career aspirations. I'm not poor as fucking dirt. I can afford to have a Nintendo Switch and buy games for it and have decent enough internet to where it doesn't take me 700 fucking hours to upload a video to YouTube. So, it gets better. And I know that's like the slogan that a lot of people use for um, people who are coming out, but it can be applied to any depression or suicide or emotional difficulty issue that you're dealing with. It gets better. It might take a long time. You just have to take it a day at a time and persevere and keep striving. Because even if it's not what you want, like if your goals are so high that you cannot achieve them, Anything better than today is an improvement, even if it is a little bit. Even if it's a little bit. So hopefully I didn't depress you guys too much here. I know I've gone a little long, got a little rambly. I'm trying to hold myself together and not completely break down because I need to be able to speak <laughs> um, but be there for people we're all human we all deserve to live and we all deserve happiness so long as it doesn't impede on other people's lives in a negative way in violence or whatever so be good to each other. We together are so capable of making a better world one person at a time by lending a hand, by saying hello, by giving a hug, by just letting people know that their contributions, no matter how small, are appreciated and helpful and that they mean something. To somebody. They're not alone. And they're loved. Because you are loved. You. Are. Loved. So thank you again. I hate to shill right now. But like. Comment and subscribe. This has been Dizzed On. I love you guys.